Hello everyone. Well, here's somebody who doesn't know that you can remove the handle from a Hoover turbo power. This is the box that has just arrived. This way up, let's hope Mr. Postman has observed those instructions. And also it says, keep upright, use handles. So there are some handles on the side. So mm, I've got one of these, if you follow my channel. The one I got was very yellowed and it was broken. The tool caddy at the back was broken. I saw this one that looks less yellow. Well, it did from the pictures. So I'm hoping that out of the two, I can get one decent vacuum cleaner. Let's uh, remove it from the box, shall we? Well, there's a multitude of boxes inside here. First of all, we've got uh, a lovely banana box. Empty, of course, no bananas. We have no bananas today. But we do have a beautiful Corning Ware casserole dish, ideal for microwave. I mean, that packaging looks pretty 80s, doesn't it? Does that, does that look a bit 80s to you? Surely they don't make this anymore, this particular design. Well, it goes with the vacuum because, well, no, I think the vacuum is 90s, to be honest. Or late 80s. Ah, uh, yes, it is. It's, it's yellower than it looked. We've also got this lovely portable laptop cushion. What a load of bonuses I'm getting with this Hoover Turbo Power. Sadly, it's empty. Well, we're almost there. Hang on, folks. Let me tilt the box. I've got some Titan Claw Plus tablets, whatever they are. And finally, with no protection whatsoever for the underside of the machine, fingers crossed the wheels have remained intact. I think the wheels are okay on the other version I unboxed, so it's not too tragic if these have smashed, but I'm hoping they're okay. Uh, out it comes. Oh. Oh, it does look a bit whiter than the other one I got. Okay, let's get rid of this bubble wrap and have a closer look at this Hoover Turbo Power Total System. I'm filming on location at the moment, so I don't have all my cleaning and polishing paraphernalia with me. So I've had to make do with a quick wipe down with a surface wipe and a polish with some lemon pledge. So it's come up very well. Obviously, this needs a full strip down and clean, but all in all, I think this is in very good condition. Now, if you've followed my channel for a while, you'll have seen a lot of turbo powers. So I'll try and keep this as brief as I can and just show you the basic features of this machine. First of all, we have, of course, the headlamp, which I'd be very surprised when I switch this machine on if that's working. But I do have spare bulbs at home, so that's no problem. Here we have the height right control. It's best to tilt the machine back when operating this. So we've got the lowest setting for carpet tiles and very short pile carpeting. The next setting up is for low pile and I think this is the setting Hoover suggests for hard floors. Then we've got medium pile, long pile, and then finally the tool setting. That's a bit stiff, hang on, there we go. What the tool setting does, apart from raising the cleaner head completely off the carpet so the brushes don't touch it, it also diverts a little flap underneath to divert the suction from the cleaner head to the hose. This is the activator brush roll that looks in pretty good condition. The brushes still have plenty of life left in them. It's grubby of course, but that will soon clean up. But it moves very smoothly, it's not seized, so that's a good sign. It will need a new belt, I suspect, as well as a new headlight bulb and, of course, a new dust bag. Both wheels seem to have survived the journey and the lower cord hook seems intact. But uh, we'll just remove the cord. I'll turn down the top hook. I personally wouldn't have shipped it like this, but uh, it seems to have survived. Yes, that's good. That's still working fine. 
It is missing the crevice tool, but the one I showed you on my channel a while ago did have it, but I think that one was missing the all-purpose nozzle, so at least I can have a full tool kit. So we've got all-purpose nozzle in nice condition. The uh, litter picker is still intact. The dusting brush is a little bit distorted, but a soak in hot water will hopefully reinvigorate those brushes and make them stand out where they should. But yes, this tool caddy was smashed on the other one, but it seems fine. So we can pop that back in the correct position. And the uh, all-purpose nozzle, very hard to put in on these, but they don't fall off. The hose is located on the side and it seems to be in good condition. It's a stretchy hose. Stretchy hose, the support stocking with a built-in wolf whistle. One for you Victoria Wood fans there. That'll have gone right over the heads of my American viewers, I think. And at the side here, we also have a single extension tube. Pretty good condition, few paint marks. I can give that a clean, it'll be fine. Here is the built-in adjustable air freshener. Of course, it makes no difference whether you have the air freshener on this setting or this setting. It smells the same, whatever you do. And I suspect that people would have just fitted the air freshener when the cleaner was new and never bothered replacing it. To access the air freshener and the dust bag, we press down on the bag release pad and open the door. Here's the inside of the bag door looking slightly whiter than the exterior. And this is where we access the air freshener. Will it have one in, I wonder? Remove the cover. And yes, we have, um, I think, ah, oh, we've got two actually. They've doubled up the air freshener. <laughs> I've never seen that before. They've uh, put one of these very cheap, generic air fresheners in. That doesn't, well, it does smell a bit, but not very nice. And here is the original Hoover one. Let's see if that still smells. No, it's it sadly lost its fragrance, but we'll put it back in there anyway. We'll discard the cheap knockoff replacement and pop the cover back on. As the owner has used a non-genuine air freshener, what's the betting they haven't used genuine dust bags? Let's have a look. Doesn't look genuine. Could be wrong though. I'm not wrong. No, that's a, obviously a replacement. Before I switch this on, I don't have any spare bags with me at the moment. As I said, I'm not at home. At least it does have the original bag slide at the bottom. So I'm gonna pop outside. It's very full of dirty dirt. I'm not going to save this muck. I'll empty this bag before I switch this uh, turbo power boost on. That was very, very full folks. And as you can see, there's uh, a little bit of dust trying to get out of the fill tube. I'll pop that back in. It should blow into the bag when I switch the machine on, assuming it works. I'm going to have to go and wash my hands now because, uh, yeah, that was quite a mucky job. At the top of the bag door here, we have the bag check indicator. There's a two speed on off switch at the back of the handle. So basically you have low speed and boost, although boost is just high speed. But on these models, on the boost models, you can see it's a little plus. It doesn't actually stay in that position. So to use it on boost, you've always got to keep your finger on the boost switch. This turbo power boost would have been near the top of the turbo power range in the early 90s. The model above this was the Autoflex version in a deep gloss metallic blue finish. A very smart looking vacuum cleaner. And I should know because I've got one in my collection in almost mint condition. You've not seen that yet at the time of making this video. Now, because this has been bought from a charity on eBay, it has been pat tested. So unlike most of my vacuum cleaner switch ons where I have to hide in the corner while I flick the switch, I'm fairly confident that this one's not going to blow up when I turn it on. Fingers crossed. Okay, we'll start off on the low power setting and then I'll switch to boost.
Well folks, I think this is a case of looks good on the outside, but is as rough as <clears throat> on the inside. Yes, the motor should not be that loud. I'm sorry if you've been listening to this with headphones on. I hope I haven't permanently damaged your hearing. This cleaner has to be taken apart anyway to find out why the handle won't recline to the lowest position. But clearly that motor needs a little bit of TLC to get it running smoother and quieter. Well, that's about the end of my video today. If you have any comments or questions about the Hoover Turbo Power Boost, please comment below. Don't forget to thumb up if you like the video. And if you don't subscribe, please subscribe and click the bell icon and then you'll be notified of all my new uploads. I don't only do older cleaners, I do modern vacuum cleaners as well and the odd home laundry appliance thrown in for good measure. So until the next time from me and this Hoover Turbo Power, it's goodbye and thanks for watching.